better that Doug Kennedy is uh, joining us as well for this joint webinar. Um, give you a, a little bit of an introduction and, uh, and then we'll get started here. Um, as I said, my name is McKay Allen. I am the uh, content manager of Log My Calls. And uh, uh, that means that basically I, uh, I uh, control and, and manage a lot of the content that we produce, the blogs that we produce and the webinars like this and, and a lot of the research that we conduct. Uh, and then we also have joining us today Doug Kennedy of the Kennedy Training Network. Doug, as you know, is, is uh, the most well-known uh, trainer probably in the industry and has uh, years and years of experience uh, helping uh, hotels and the hospitality industry at large improve their ability to book reservations over the phone. And so we're really excited that Doug's agreed to join us today. So uh, thank let you, me... McKay. Yeah, thank, thank, you, thank McKay. you, Doug, for taking the time. We appreciate it. Excellent. And as you know, I've been a huge advocate of call monitoring systems at all times for so many years. It's a wonderful tool for assessment. And um, I, having discovered the log my calls, few months back, it's been wonderful to help get the word out uh, on your system. So thanks for inviting me to join with you today. Yeah, thank you, Doug. We appreciate it. And, and thank you to all, you all for coming today. Uh, I do want to uh, lay out a couple of house cleaning items, and then we'll, we'll jump right in. We'll tell you how the sort of agenda will go for the next little while, and then we'll, we'll hop right in. Uh, we encourage you to ask questions throughout. If you have questions, just type those into the little questions bar on the GoToWebinar screen there and uh, then we'll address those as they come in and then at the conclusion as well uh, we'll, we'll address questions and answer. In terms of the agenda and how this webinar today will actually work, um, we are going to lay out a few of the lessons that we've learned from tracking, recording, and auditing phone calls. I'll lay out a couple of lessons initially, A, from some marketing lessons we've learned, so put on your marketing hats for a few minutes at the start, and then we'll get into some research we've gathered about call and phone performance. And then uh, Doug will go for another 20 minutes or so and lay out some of the things that he has found with his years of training experience that will help you improve your ability to, to sell and book reservations and book rooms over the phone. And uh, then we'll have Q&A. And then at the conclusion of that, if you want to stick around, we're going to be providing a short demonstration of Log My Calls, how it works, uh, and uh, hopefully you know, educate you a little bit more on, on this tool that's out there. Um, so, Doug, any any words uh, intro of introduction before we before I get started? No, I think we're ready to jump right into it and first look at your research. Um, just to make sure everyone knows, we will be ending promptly at two. Yes, very good. And the other the other two thing to notice, minutes. thank you for mentioning that, Doug. Yeah, two minutes. The other thing to note too is we will be recording this webinar as well. So uh, we do want to make sure that you know that and and we'll have access to it after the fact. So share it with with anybody and everybody. We'll send you the link. Uh, maybe tomorrow morning of where the recording is housed. So with that, let's hop into it. And uh, Doug, feel free to jump in at any point, and I'll, I'll go through my presentation here, and and, uh, uh, and then uh, Doug can jump in whenever. And if you all have questions throughout, just please jump in as well. So um, a brief introduction about Log My Calls, who we are. So we provide marketing analytics and call recording uh, for hotels and the hospitality industry across the country. We work with hundreds of properties in a variety of different sectors of the hospitality space. And uh, they use us for, as I said, those couple of, of areas. They use us to, on the marketing side, they use us to track which marketing channels produce phone calls. So they want to say, okay, is that direct mailer I sent out producing calls? Or is it an online ad that's producing calls? Or perhaps it's my website that's producing calls? They want to know so they can spend their marketing dollars more effectively. So that's one way that uh, hotels and in the hospitality industry use uh, our, our service. The other way, and the predominant way really, is, is with call recording. Uh, it's an inexpensive call recording, call monitoring solution uh, that allows you to track the performance of your, of your team on the phone, whether they be in a call center environment, a small call center, or a large call center, or you know front desk and, and corporate sales. So it's a way that a lot of... Uh, people in the industry, uh, a method they use to track the performance of their, of their people on the phone. Uh, and then we also, we just recently won this award from Amazon, which is awesome. We're excited about it. So how does the industry use Log My Calls? I kind of uh, mentioned this a moment ago. They'll put phone numbers on your uh, website, your mailers, anything you want to track which channels produce calls and which don't. It is an inexpensive call recording solution. Um, it is an alternative to mystery shopping, which is fairly popular in the industry. Uh, and it is a, a tool to track uh, close rate. 
and call scores. That's the beauty of recording real calls. You can actually get data from the calls about how what percentage of time a call turned into a reservation and which employees are better on the phone than others and, and that sort of thing. So we're going to talk about a few of the lessons we've learned here. And some of them are going to be marketing related, as I said. Others are going to be call and phone performance related. The first lesson here is, is marketing related. Now, you, you, if you have a smartphone, which you would then be like about 70% of adults in the US, you know that when you do a search on Google, you see a little phone number pop up on the search results for some of the paid search results. You'll see this little phone number. And you can simply click that phone number, and you'll be connected directly to the business. This is called click-to-call, mobile click-to-call. They're basically tappable phone numbers that appear in ads. That's another way for Google to make money uh, with the mobile experience. So they will then bill you every time that number is clicked, and that drives calls to your hotel. And our recommendation is that you should try this. And I'll get into the data about why here. So we were working uh, with a, a individual franchise owner of a Holiday Inn Express, and they wanted to try some mobile, but they hadn't really done it before. So we said, you know what, even though it's not our industry, we don't do marketing for companies. We just provide them data about their marketing. Uh, we'll help you with it because we were interested in the data. So what we did is we put local phone numbers in some click-to-call ads, paper call ads on Google. So when someone searched Holiday Inn Express uh, in this town, they would see their hotel come up with a little bit of information and then uh, the phone number. And we put phrases like call now and call the book a room in those ads. Well, here's what we found, and this is really interesting. We found that for every $10,000 spent on those ads, there was a $20,000 revenue gain. So they actually doubled their ROI. So for $1,000 spent, they got $2,000 in revenue, etc. So it was a doubling ROI experiment which is incredible from a marketing perspective. Uh, and the turnaround time was very quick too, which is even better. The money's back in your pocket sooner. So our recommendation, we have no horse in this race, if you will, uh, but our recommendation is that you should try mobile click-to-call. Uh, it's, it's going to be a way that will boost your revenue. Uh, there's a lot of examples from the hospitality industry, but I wanted to show one outside of the industry because I think it has a little bit of perspective. So this next slide talks a little bit about insurance. They also bought some click-to-call ads in the Google mobile ad network, and they put in phone numbers in these ads, so call to get a quote now or call us now. So the little phone number appeared, and here's what they found. They actually noted that it was actually cheaper to buy these ads than it was regular Google ads, so they had a 10% lower cost per click than regular ads. And then these click-to-call ads also had a 30% lower cost per acquisition. And that's because of a couple of factors. First, of course, it costs less to buy the ads. But then additionally, and Doug will talk about this more uh, in a moment, your phone calls are significantly higher likelihood to close than other methods. So if someone calls your property, there's a decent chance they're going to end up booking a room from you. And so your cost per acquisition when you drive more phone calls goes down. So it costs you less to get a customer, which is, which is great. So our recommendation is to try mobile. Do a small mobile ad buy. Get together with your marketing guys and do a small mobile click-to-call ad buy and see if it works and see if it drives calls for you. Our recommendation is that you should at least try it. Now, uh, mobile, as we said, it has higher click-through rates than desktop PPC, and the most common result is a call, which is great. And of course, with the call tracking and call analytics tools now available, you can get a lot of very rich, very useful data um, from phone calls that used to be unavailable. Now, now, this is the sort of other side uh, of the case study. Now, uh, this is, just yeah, go, go ahead, back, Doug. Go, go back to that last one in just a moment. I know that uh, this is, I've seen various incidental data, um, and I believe you might have also been to some of the Google conferences where people were talking about, you know, of course, the proliferation of searches now on PDAs and also tablets. And uh, as a result, it could generate more phone calls to bricks and mortar because, you know, I, if I'm going to make a reservation for a hotel online, I'm going to need a keyboard. <laughs> um, and if I'm on a PDA, I am going to press that phone number. So it's kind of an interesting world that, uh, you know, voice channel could have some uh, significant upside because of that and all the more reason to watch it. No, that's, you know what, Doug, that's a really good point. Um, I'll, I'll throw out some data r real quick here. So Google says that by the end of this year, mobile searches will actually surpass desktop searches. So there will actually be more people searching. And th this is very true in a real sense. If you think about your property or group of properties, 
more people are going to be seeing your website on their phone than will ever see it on any other screen, which means they're going to interact with you in a way that is conducive to a phone. So there have been a lot of other third-party research indicate that uh, the number of phone calls will increase perhaps double in the next year or so uh, because of this huge increase in mobile search. So anyway, I think Doug's dead on. You're going to see more calls even than you do now. It's becoming more important, not less. So uh, thanks for pointing that out, Doug. That's, that's a great thing to point out. Uh, the other element, the other side of this that is interesting to note, we said, hey, try mobile, and then we're saying beware of mobile. And here's why we say that. So this is the same case study uh, that, we, uh, that we did with Holiday Inn Express. So as we said, every time that Google, every time you clicked on a number, every time a caller clicked on the little phone number in the ad and called the hotel, Google bills them. And that bill, of course, depends on keyword bidding and all sorts of stuff. But for the calls that were driven, there were 1,800 calls driven, Google bills the same for every one of those, right? They don't know what happens during the call. They don't know if the call is completed or if it ends up in a reservation or not. They don't know. They bill you for everything. Well, because we were using call tracking, these, these clients of ours, in any case, were using our service, we were able to see the following, that about 52% of the calls didn't ever end up connecting to the hotel. So in other words, someone accidentally clicked it, or they started, started ringing and they, uh, you know, or they were like, oh, I didn't mean to call these guys, or, or maybe they, uh, they tapped it twice or something like that. Over half the time, the calls didn't actually reach the property to begin with. 48% of the time the calls were completed, they did reach the property, but in half of those cases, the leads were not qualified. So the person on the call was maybe asking for directions or uh, referencing a previous stay they'd had there, or asking about something in the area or what to do. Or Those are fine. Those are, those are decent calls, but they weren't necessarily uh, qualified possible guests at your property. So uh, about 25% uh, of the total number, 450, were qualified opportunities. And of those, 180 reservations were booked. So bottom line is 10% of the total call volume ended up with reservations. Now this is interesting data for several reasons. The first is that you need to make sure that you're not only trusting the data that Google gives you uh, about how effective your click-to-call campaigns are. You've got to use call tracking to see if this is effective. We wouldn't have known any of this if we just relied on Google's data. None of it. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is that your team on the phone may be actually doing better than you think. Because if you just look at this data and say, my goodness, there were all these calls and only this many reservations, my team's terrible on the phone. Well, that's not entirely true because only this many were actually qualified. So maybe they're doing a little better than you think. That's important. And then third, if you're trying to make marketing decisions, future marketing decisions with data, if you don't have all this information, this information is not going to give you a clear picture. You're not going to know how effective it really was. And so you've got to have the full picture of data. So while we say try mobile, make sure you use call tracking with mobile. Uh, otherwise, you may get data that is confusing and doesn't make sense, and there's a lot of blind spots if you just have this one line item of data here. Doug, any thoughts on that before I move on? No, I, I think it's excellent as for the from the operational side of reservations, because often that does happen where marketing will say, look how many calls we got, but only this many reservations. And now you can actually say what the calls, what occurred during those calls. Just yeah, so that's wonderful to be able to track this level of data. Yeah, that's that's a, I never would have thought about that that way. Doug. That's that's a great point. You've now got data. You can go to marketing and say, well, wait a second. You may have been mm -hmm. billed for 1,800 calls, <laughs> but only this many yeah. were good. So that's a great point. Um, OK, I want to get into now a little bit of uh, data about phone performance. And this is, um, this is important data here. And, and uh, I'll, I'll move a little briskly from this point on here to make sure Doug has plenty of time. Uh, so this is a case study of a client in the industry who started using uh, Log My Calls to record and score phone calls. And what they did is they found over a period of five months that their close rates increased substantially. Now, I want to point out this close rate is, of course, not on the total number of calls, like we demonstrated before, because a lot of the calls are going to be not very good. This is on the qualified leads that they got. So their close rate was 13% when we first started. So basically, when they first started listening to their calls, only 13% of the time did those calls result in a reservation. By the end of five months of actively listening and, and implementing a procedure to improve, 
they had actually increased their close rate to 70%. Now, it's worth pointing out that, of course, you know, like you see on the commercials, this may not be uh, indicative of results across every, every business. That's obvious. But in this case, for this hotel, the ability just to record and gather data from calls actually improved their close rate substantially. They trained their team, um, but this, this improved their close rates and their revenue in a very real and very substantial way. And they couldn't have done it had they not had the data and the call recordings themselves. Doug, any thought there, sir? Uh, no, it's just, uh, as you pointed out, with regards to the, the, this is, you know, a conversion of qualified leads, not service calls, cancellation changes. Uh, and also, of course, um, as you and I have discussed in case hey, several times, that uh, actual conversion rate potential varies greatly by type of hotel, vacation rental company, et cetera. For example, vacation home rental companies may get several sales inquiries because people really do have more complex travel plans than they are checking with their, their family and friends. But even if, regardless, I think the trend is going to be the same. If you just start listening to calls, start scoring them, start giving people a process of it. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, and then I want to throw, talk about another case study here. Um, this shows, so one of the, one of the things that uh, Log My Calls allows uh, our clients to do, and I know Doug does this in a very great way, is actually score calls. So not just measure close rates, but actually measure what happens. So did they greet properly? Did they ask for the business? Did they do all these things? Well, this data shows you that uh, scores have a direct correlation to close rates. So when scores rise, close rates rise. So this is a client over a period of about three months, about 6,000 calls a month were analyzed. And you can see the scores here on the left. As they rose, so did close rates. So there is a correlation between gathering some of the seemingly, you know, innocuous data. Of, you know, did they greet well? Were they happy when they answered? Did they ask for the business? That stuff matters. Statistically, it matters. And that's what this data shows here over a significant uh, sample size. Um, I want to finally, before we conclude, I want to talk about a, a very in-depth study we conducted with a couple of universities. So, and some of you, we conducted a webinar with Doug in January. And some of this data was presented there, but I, I want to make sure that it's presented here as well. So we conducted a, over 6,000 calls. These were real calls. They were not mystery shopping calls um, at over 350 properties across the U.S. and Canada. These properties were a wide variety, a huge range uh, across every single STR classification, geographic area, et cetera. So the data is, it is statistically significant. It is, it is good data, if you will. And we worked with UNLV, the Herrick College of Hotel Administration, to do the study, and then statisticians at Dixie State University analyzed the, the, uh, the data and sort of got a second set of eyes on it as to whether the data was valid. And so we published this study with them. And here are a few interesting findings from the study. So what we did is we tracked close rates, and then we correlated those close rates with specific things that happen on the call, elements of the scored call, if you will. So for example, when the employee uses the caller's name in the initial conversation, the caller is 2.5 times more likely to book a room with you. It's that big of a deal. Now this doesn't mean that if you have your entire team start using the name in every call that your reservations will increase by two and a half times. That's not what this means. But it means that the caller is two and a half times more likely to book. Uh, which is significant. And I mean, even if it's half that for your business, even if it's not that substantial for you specifically, which we had every reason, you know, as I said, the data is good, it's huge sample size. But even if it's half that, that's still a big deal. Asking for the business. So when your employee asks for the business, the caller is 4.4 times more likely to book a room. In most cases, on most calls, if someone says, you know what, I'm going to just call around a little bit, uh, in most cases, the employee on the phone will say, okay, sounds good, and won't, uh, you know, won't directly ask for the business. So if they do ask for the business, though, they're four and a half times more likely to book, uh, more likely to reserve a room. And then this is the most substantial. Um, when the caller objects, so when they object in any way, say, I'm just going to, I need to price shop a little more, I'm going to go online and look a little bit more, most of the time the employee just lets them get off the phone. But in the cases where the employee actually persists a little bit, and says, you know, what about our, our pool's incredible, though, or whatever it might be, um, or starts to work with them a little bit. 
uh, and, and persists in any way, that caller is 12.6 times more likely to reserve a room. So persistence pays. If you remember nothing else from my portion, just remember persistence pays. Uh, remember, these people call you for a room. They, they need one or they wouldn't have called. So uh, it's, it's important to be persistent. It statistically makes a huge difference. Doug, anything to throw in there? Oh, excuse me. No, I, um, I'm just so fascinated by this because it's nice to, um, to think that there would be this correlation. And we can go in and do training and then find that a conversion ratio goes up. But never until the study have I seen it tied back to specific things that occurred. Um, and I would just add that I would strongly guess that the one who answers and uses the caller's name, the one that asks for the sale, that's the same one that tries to overcome the objection. So, you know, closing the sale starts with that greeting. And if you do all these best practices, these components, you're going to get the results that you've seen on the graph. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great point. It starts with the initial five, two, you know, two to five seconds of the call and builds to this. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Uh, a couple more data points, and then I'll send it over to Doug. So what we did, now the first three slides there of this study were about, okay, what, what, how important are these factors? Now we wanted to track how often are these things done. So what we did is we compared front desk GSRs versus call centers across this entire study. And what we found is that in 52% of the cases, front desk staff asked for the reservation. So they said something like, and Doug can help me with this if I mess it up, but said something like, well, why don't I go ahead and we'll, we'll book a room for you right now. We'll get something down. We'll reserve a room for you. Or a way to, a way to ask for the sale directly. Um, in 52% of the cases, front desk did that. In 42% of the cases, call centers did that. So in the majority of cases, call centers were not asking directly for the caller to book a room. Now this is, the I think, incredibly fascinating data. So we said a moment ago that attempting to overcome an objection was the single most important thing you could do on a call, statistically. I mean, that's not an opinion. It's data says that. So if the data says that, it's incredibly important. One would think that it's done very often. It's done the least often of all of the things we measured. 90% uh, of the time, the front desk GSRs that, uh, that we analyzed the calls uh, in this massive study did not attempt to overcome an objection. In 90% of the cases, if someone raised any objection, they simply let them get off the phone. They let them get away with that objection, if you will. And it was even worse in call centers in this case. 98% um, of the time, they did not attempt to overcome an objection. If there was any objection at all to booking a room at that moment, they did not attempt even to overcome it. Not, a, not, not overcome it effectively, but even attempt to overcome it. Uh, Doug, any thoughts on these two? I, I think this is uh, fascinating just one thing. data. Yeah, just go ahead. one thing. We know you didn't call any KTN-trained call centers. Because <laughs> <laughs> they would have done this but, perfectly. Um, and, and, um, no, but um, it's just amazing that it's not happening. And again, now you have the correlation that when it does happen, it's going to generate more business. And then the last slide I'll, I'll present you with here is what we did is we also gathered total score <clears throat> across uh, various SDR classifications. And we just thought it would be interesting to compare it across the classifications. So these were this was a compilation, a cumulative average score across all of the things we measured. So this is you know, greeting well, asking for the business, using their name, overcoming objections. This is all of that put together in a number. And this is what we found. Casinos and resorts did the best uh, out of all the SDR classifications. Um, maybe that's a little more salesy environment, perhaps. I don't know. But they did better in everything that we measured. Um, down the line, economy did the worst, which, you know, based on resources and things, isn't terribly, um, you know, we weren't terribly shocked by the data. But it did, it did show a huge uh, clumping in the middle here. And we know not, we didn't break it out as, as intricately as maybe we could for this specific graph. But um, it is sort of interesting just to look at. The final takeaway, and I, just to conclude here, and then we'll send it over to Doug, is that the industry in those two areas, overcoming objections and asking for the business, which coincidentally are the two most important things, were also the two things that were scored most poorly on. The industry needs substantial improvement in those areas. I mean, there's no, con there's no denying that fact. Um, and then the other interesting thing is that the front desk staff did score better in almost every category than, not al almost every, excuse me, every category than call centers. Um, it is worth pointing out that the majority of calls that we gathered from call centers were from large flag-based call centers. Uh, but 
you know, this is what the data showed us. So um, the, the final thing that I would add just before we send it over to Doug is this. This data was made possible together because of real call recordings. It would have been impossible to gather the vast majority of this data with mystery shopping calls. Um, and so we, you know, mystery shopping calls are great, and I think Doug can speak to this a little bit more. He's got more experience. But certainly call recording gives rich, rich, rich data because it's a real interaction. It's, a, it's not a staged, uh, you know, yeah. fake interaction. It's real. So with that, Doug, I'll turn it over to you and give you control right. of the screen, sir, and you can go ahead. Well, thank you, McKay. Hope things are well in Utah. We're wet and soggy already here in Florida. Ah, um, oh, dear. So I'm going to be sharing some lessons now. KTN, my company, we provide on-site training. We do remote private webinars just for your staff, unlike you know a mass audience one is this. We also do mystery shopping, and then we use, for our many clients who have various recording tools, in, including an increasing number that are using log my calls, we actually listen in to real calls, score them, assess them, and then coach accordingly to those. And again, it's a far more value because it is a real call. So what I'm going to share with you, uh, it also helps us with mystery shopping because we know how to sound like a caller, and they do sound different circa 2013 than they did um, and not so many years ago. I'm going to share with you four different segments of lessons that we've learned for various components of selling. We're going to talk about five, about five minutes on each to find out the story, to use descriptions that are alluring, enticing. We're going to review briefly some reminders on the language of hospitality, and then we are going to spend some time at the end on asking for that sale and trying to overcome the resistance if for any reason they're not ready. So the one thing that screams out when you listen to real calls these days is most callers have a story to tell. So a lot of times then what happens is they've been online prior to calling, um, and there's a reason they picked up the phone or clicked that number to dial through. They, they didn't see what they wanted, or they had a unique question, they had an allergy, they had a special need. It says you can only put four in the room, but it's mom, dad, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a baby. So when they're calling, they've got a story to tell. Now, when I first started doing reservations training in the early 1990s, my company, HSA, and many other companies that were out there competing with us, we all kind of arrived in the same place for training. We had the line of questioning, which looks similar to this. Oh, what are your dates? How many adults and children have you stayed with us before? No, it's my first time. Now, a lot of times we would say, oh, is that business or is that leisure? Uh, but then we would launch into, for those first-time visitors, what I today would call the elevator speech, the 30-second commercial. Now, if you listen to the real calls right now and you go through this line of questioning and the, have you stayed with us before? No. What brings you to the area? And then you launch into your spiel. Uh, what happens is over time, the reservations, the front desk, the call center staff tends to grab on to those certain three or four benefits and tries to use them for everyone. So what brings you to the area? Business. Oh, it's your first time? Let me tell you about our hotel. We have internet. We have a complimentary continental breakfast or a grab and go or whatever you might have. Um, we have a business center for your convenience. You want to make that reservation? Then the other person calls up. Um, what brings you to the area? Oh, it's a vacation. Oh, have you been here before? No? Well, let me tell you about it. We have internet. We have breakfast. We have a sparkling pool. And when I listen to real calls, in fact, I just did an in-depth project for a client call center, and I personally listened to a lot of calls, and they were using that type of process. It was 20 calls that I listened to. I did not hear one person stop and say, wow, you have internet? No. Really? So back then, we kind of had to tell people about these things but because they didn't have much information. They were looking through a directory. They were looking through AAA, something called the Hotel Travel Index, if anybody remembers that. They would go to this old-fashioned place called a bookstore and buy this thing called the Tourism Guidebook. And they didn't know much when they called, so we kind of had to tell them everything. Today's world, as we all know, especially if you have a separate number for your website and you're tracking it, you know that They've been online first prior to calling the majority of the time. In fact, many today are online while they're on the phone. So we still want to ask those other questions. We still want to ask, have you stayed with us before? Um, oh, no, you haven't? Well, what brings you to the area? 
and then say a new question for 2013. Oh, terrific. You're coming out for whatever reason. Well, as I'm checking these dates for you, are there any questions I can answer about our location or our amenities? This is going to effectively knock on the door and determine if they're ready to have a conversation. And then you're going to find out, you're going to unmask the caller, and you're going to figure out who's behind that mask we looked at a moment ago. You know, today's world, there's a lot of what I call rate double checkers. They've been educated by the mass media and different articles that appear online and here and there. Don't believe the rate online is the lowest. Pick up the phone and call. And very often, that you know, sometimes they're polite about it. Are you sure that's your lowest rate? Other times, you know, they're very blunt. I've had calls, and McKay, you may have heard some of these, where they say, if you don't sell the room for that, uh, to me for a lower rate, you might not get anything anyway if it's vacant. So we'll find out. You know, do they just have a question? The, the, the other thing, by the way, is they want to make sure the final price is what they're looking at. They want to make sure there's no hidden fees, no extra charges, no surprises. Um, also, you might have someone who's what I call cyberphobic. There are people out there that simply do not ever buy anything online and put that credit card in. Uh, they're perhaps concerned someone's uh, nearby breaking into their internet access. You also might find you have someone that read an online, conflicting online guest reviews. Um, when I do on-site training, we always pull up the TripAdvisor reviews of the client or the company, and we, you know, pretty much, oh, typically there's more excellence in goods, or maybe it's just the best hotels with the best service are hiring training companies to get even better. But I do tend to find there's more excellence in goods, but there's always a few terribles and pores. Be assured, our callers are going to read some at each end of the spectrum. And they're going to become conflicted, and many of them will call. Or they simply don't trust the photos they see online. Finally, you might find out they simply are confused. They're overwhelmed with choices. It's interesting that any product we go out to purchase today, there's so many makes, models, and options. Um, years ago, when we used those directories, we might call three or four different options and consider, you know, but a reasonable person would not spend more than 30 or 40 minutes making calls. Today's world in that same 30 minutes or let's say even 10 minutes, they can be looking at dozens and dozens of options. Whether they're at OTI to OTA sites like an Expedia, Book It, Travelocity, or they're at your own website, particularly if you're a resort particularly if you're a vacation home rental company and you have a multitude of categories. And they can't pick. And so that's what we have to do is ask more and better questions. Now, we don't want to end the questioning process there. We want to continue on, again, depending on the caller. If all they want to do is double check the price and reconfirm that's the final, we can go on to securing that sale. But if they do start to engage in a conversation, remember to ask questions throughout the call. Now, I'm going to run through these rather quickly. Um, McKay, you are posting the, the um, well, yes, we're going to post the link, as you already said, to this webinar. Um, so you'll have access to replay it um, in case you can't write that fast. So uh, yes. one question that might help is, especially in the scenario we just described where you have a multitude of accommodations and packaging and rates, ask them, do you have something in mind or are you looking for help in selecting? When someone says, where are you located, don't just give the address. Let's find out. Are you familiar with the area? For example, we have hotels signed up here from New York. Are you familiar with Manhattan? Yes. Well, the hotels at, let's I don't know, 42nd and Lexington. Oh, OK. We all know where that is. But if they're not familiar and someone says you're at 46, 42nd and Lex, they're probably going to be repeating the question. So where are you located? Those of you who are destination type resorts or full service hotels that have a lot of services, Let's ask. Many of us have wonderful fitness centers or access passes to nearby facilities. Many of you might have spas in-house or nearby that you're affiliated with. Some of you have golf, ski, beach excursions. Let's find out. Are you interested in those things before we tell you about it? And then finally, is there something special you're looking for? This is a great question when someone says, oh, OK, well, what's it like? And I know you really want to say it's like a hotel. But of course, we don't say that. We say, is there something special you're looking for? And again, the caller will tell you. So that's our first segment. I'm also going to spend um, a 
a little extra time on this next segment, and then our last two will go a little bit quicker. But these, what we just covered, changing up our questioning process and changing up now the way we present the information about our hotels, resorts, and companies, these are the two biggest changes circa 2013. So we're spending the most on those. So now we have a caller that does have questions. They do want to hear information. They want to find out about our the overall experience. We want to give descriptions that allure and entice. So to allure is to tempt, to entice, to attract by appealing to their emotional desires. We want to sell to emotion, not intellect. Now to demonstrate what we do every day, I'm going to ask my friend McKay to help me out with an activity that we do a little bit differently in our actual on-site classes. But since we have a large audience today, I'm going to assign McKay to be my volunteer. Volunteer, uh, McKay, are you a pet person at all, particularly a cat person? You know, if I'm being honest, the answer is no. I am not a cat person. Dogs, maybe? I like some dogs, yes. <laughs> so you're really just not a, a pet person. But actually, you're a perfect volunteer. So okay, I want good. you to describe the physical description of this animal you see on the screen. This cat, this animal is a cat. This, uh, it is black with some white on the front and on the feet and sort of creepy eyes. <laughs> creepy eyes, okay. Thank you. It's always interesting when you get a non-pet person to describe a photo. <laughs> so let's say to you, McKay, we could say this is just a cat, right? Could be any cat, just some old cat. Except it's not That's just a cat, McKay. This is my cat. This oh, is my sorry, own Doug. personal cat. <laughs> it's OK. <laughs> this is the Shadow Kitty. Now, we are a four-pet household. I did literally marry the farmer's daughter. If it was up to my wife, Kathy, we would probably have 40 animals. But we have four. And the little maxi dog is, you know, her, uh, has adopted her. It's my personal romantic rival for her attention. Um, each of my teenagers seem to have taken to one of the other cats take to them. Shadow is dad's cat, and she literally came with the name Shadow when we got her. She was a rescue cat from the Humane Society, and it's the perfect name because for me, she is my shadow. When I walk in the door, she follows me around the whole time. If I sit down at my home desk to pay some bills, she likes to type on the keyboard. If I'm in the living room watching TV, she's right next to me. So this is not just a cat. This is my cat. So I hope you notice the differences in the audience today in the descriptions here. When we have McKay giving the features, it's kind of like where we say, tell you about the hotel, 200 rooms, restaurant, bar, pool. Tell you about the rooms, oh, 400 square feet. They have an iron, ironing board, hair dryer, and coffee maker. You want to book one? It is not just a hotel. It is not just a resort. It is our resort. So in order to evoke that imagery, in and make a compelling case for our experience, we want to first of all use colorful language in the forms of adjectives and adverbs. We want to use words that appeal to emotion and not just intellect. Um, when you listen to real calls today, you find either that, that reservations in front desk, staff taking calls, just do give the facts. So they will say it is a beach front, or it is a city view, or we are centrally located. They, what we want to do is add descriptors. We want to add some visually or emotionally descriptive language. So it's not just a balcony. It, what will you see from that balcony? Uh, and it is something that if you have not worked with your staff, uh, you're going to find that they tend to latch on to certain words. I was just listening, doing a project for a client recently. It was a resort. The agent spoke with enthusiasm, but the only descriptors that she used were beautiful and great. And it was a beautiful view, a beautiful resort. It was really great food. The rooms were beautiful. Everything was great. So it's something we have to work on and focus. Now, the next thing that we want to think about besides the visual language is to use needs-based suggestions, recommendations, and endorsements. If you do listen to real calls today, you will hear that once rapport is established, real world callers, they do tend to ask directly for recommendations and opinions. They're going to say, which one would you pick? Is that the best value? What would you say? So that's good. But I'm sure the companies on the call today are not satisfied with good. We want to be the best. True sales superstars know to use these recommendations proactively 
and to base it on the caller's needs. Um, similarly, the endorsement, when you have that person that's been online, they've looked at all these options, they just can't pick, and they pick up the phone and call, if we say you've made the right choice. I think this is a great option for you. It's that little nudge they might need to make the commitment. All right. So before we go into this um, next segment then, just in summary there, we definitely have the opportunity to allure and entice our callers versus listing, inform, and notifying them. Now, before we move on, I want to share one quick example here on why we also have to illuminate those pictures that, and describe the hotel they're looking at right now. Um, a lot of times in my classes, I will say, have you ever had people directly ask, does it look like the pictures online do? Well, there might be a reason for that. A company called Oyster, who's trying to revive the paid professional guest reviews put out this news story and it was syndicated all around um, I found it on the hotel business I'm sorry the business insider so a general business publication has one it had in January 1 million nine hundred thousand some views so they went out and they took the picture online and I'll show you a few examples okay so here's the picture online of the sugarcane club Barbados but when you go there it doesn't really look like that. The Langham Hotel Boston. Um, so this picture online, wow, it looks beautiful. So much like home, except when you go there, it doesn't really look like that. Next one, the Lima, Peru, uh, Lima Club Lima Hotel in Peru. Wow, I am so there. I'm going to call my wife now. These chairs are made for us this summer. Except if we were to go there, uh, the pool is really not that big. And then finally, the Lowe's L'Enfant Plaza. Oh, I want to take my teenagers to D.C. This is where I'm staying. Kids, we're going to look right out our window and see the Washington Monument. Except from that very room, we would actually see a brick wall. So now you know why people need the assurance. And they, they're going to ask you, does it really look like that? What is the truth? All right, so we're going to round the corner and um, go through this next segment rather quickly um, and then finish up with talking about asking for the sale. We can go through this briefly because it's an easy concept to talk about. It's just real challenging to get people to do, and that's why you have to audit those calls. You have to play the calls back for the actual agent. You've got to let them hear themselves. They'll realize they might be saying some things that aren't coming across the way you would like. So, for example, a lot of times when the person says, okay, I'll take that reservation, the agent turns into monotone. Okay, name, address, phone. Let's, in, let's not play quiz the caller. Let's instead say, okay, may I have your name, please, and your address. I'm sure it's never happened to anyone on the call today that you had someone call up and you couldn't find their reservation. Well, if we don't train our staff, they're going um, to say, you're not in the system. So when you don't have the reservation, we want to break it to them easy. Do you have a confirmation number? Could it possibly be under another name? Also, when you listen to calls, you might find out you have like sellers, and it's not just in California. Tell you about the hotel? Oh, sure. Well, there's like a pool, and there's like a business center. There's like a restaurant. It's not really a restaurant. It's like a restaurant. Let's not say what it's like. Let's say what it really is. Awesome. Awesome is an awesome word, except it's an awesome problem when it's awesomely overused. So, you know, let's move beyond that. This goes back to the language and the colorful language. Let's replace some of these basic words, very unique, super special. I know a lot of us might have wanted to say this when you explain things for the second. The third time, we are sometimes tempted to say, Sir, as I already explained before, yes, ma'am, once again, that rate does include the taxes. Which part of include do you not understand, the in or the glue? Much better to say, let me explain this another way. I know it can sometimes be confusing. Similar to awesome, we have a no problem epidemic. Thank you so much for your excellent service today. No problem. It almost diminishes the, 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 um, Thank you. So it's almost like saying, oh, normally it is a problem, but we're going to cut you some slack today. No problem for you. Much more eloquent to say, you're most welcome. 
or it was my pleasure. And then this one relates to hotels, uh, hotel and reservation selling, particularly those of you who are summer destinations. Right about now, everybody's calling for July 4th, mid-July date. When all you have left is all you have left, never say it's all you have left. Instead, we want to say, fortunately, what we still have open for your date is. Okay? So if we say all we have left, we're diminishing it. And very often, what I find, when what's left, it's the best. <laughs> Sir, unfortunately, all we have left is our beautiful one-bedroom luxury suite with a view. And I know you can't afford this. You do sound cheap and poor. Might as well be saying that. Instead, let's say, fortunately, what we still have left is actually our best. And then finally, avoid travel industry and travel and lodging industry jargon um, and use words that are familiar to everyone. A lot of times we'll have our own internal words. Some companies use the name of their reservation system. Oh, let, let me check opera for you. What? I don't want to go to an opera. Um, or they might uh, they might use an industry term. Oh, let me place that on a, let me get you an, um, a hold number on that instead of let me place that itinerary on a courtesy hold for you. So let's talk in words that make sense. Let's not use words like unit to describe condominiums. That's fine when you're talking about inventory to your marketing director, but when we talk to guests, it's a wonderful accommodation, it's a room, it's a deluxe suite. Now we will end up with really the most basic thing, and I think, McKay, you said it well, remind your staff, the callers called you. It's not like we pick people out of the phone book, call them up and say, hey, this is Doug from Brand X Resort. You want to come and stay at our resort anytime this summer? Ooh, sorry to interrupt dinner. They called us. The, the proof that we should offer the sale every time is that it ensures availability. It's going to lock in that rate. So often the callers, uh, so often when I teach my classes, I ask participants, how many times have you had the person call back and they say, okay, called earlier, now I'm ready. And yet when you check, there's nothing left. Or you still have that same room, but now your revenue manager closed out discounts and the price has gone up. So they called us, they need a place to stay, let's stop them from multitasking and surfing and let's do it right now. <clears throat> it's also going to help minimize your distribution costs. For example, if they're looking on an online travel agency, you can save yourself significant distribution costs. Plus we make sure they don't pick another hotel or option off of those websites. Now, one great way to remind everyone, you know, a lot of them might be on incentives and there's some, some definitely um, that helps, but one way to really drive it home of why it's so important to get more sales is increased occupancy creates more business for the entire staff. So when I'm training on site, I say think about those people you see in the back hallways, in the employee break rooms. Think about the bellman or the, the wait staff, the bell person who's working on gratuities. Every time we convince a guest to stay with us, it's more business for everybody. And that, I think, is a good motivator when we think about it in those terms, and not just we're making more business for the corporation. Now, a lot of times when you ask for that sale, they're going to reject you. They're going to say, well, uh, no, I can't book it yet. i got to do something else first. What do they have to do first? More likely, they're going to call around. They will tell us they're going to check with their wife. The wife will say she's going to check with her husband. The admin assistant has to check with the, the boss. And the boss has to check with her admin assistant to make sure the meeting was still on. So we kind of have to figure out, are they really not ready? And this goes back to McKay's slide about try anything to keep them on the line. Say, well, before I let you go, is there something you're looking for I haven't mentioned? Or um, is that rate within the price range you were expecting? You know, and we can kind of help them qualify for discounts at that point. Say, well, let me check AAA or AARP. What we don't want to do is offer AAA, AARP, military discounts up front before we've had to. Uh, my wife subscribes us to AAA membership every year. I almost never remember to ask for it. So anybody who asks me is giving away discounts that they really don't have to do. So you can help them qualify for a lower rate if you have one open. If it's top rates only, high demand, reiterate the value. You can create urgency to let them know availability is limited. Or if it's low demand and there's 
very low occupancy, let them know the discount or the promotional rate could sell out, and then slide right on in, right on in and say, but what we can do is we can lock it in for you now. And of course, depending on your company or your policies for um, deposits, at that point you can remove barriers. You could either say we can hold it for 24 hours um, on a courtesy. Um, you could say we do charge a one-night deposit, but it's fully refundable except a booking fee. Or if you're a traditional hotel, you can let them know the reservation is only to hold the reservation, to, to hold the booking. The credit card is only to hold the reservation, and it is not charged. Um, and you know they can call back and cancel up until 24 or 48 hours out. For the guest who usually books online at an online travel agency, they may not know that if you book on the voice with you right now, that you will not be charged full payment. So any effort to extend that call. And then if you have phone numbers, such as you'll see in the log my call demo, demo you can call back the next day and if things have changed. You know, we've had another op uh, option open up. We've had some cancellations. Also, I highly recommend, especially if the, the higher revenue per booking opportunity. So what that means is the longer your transient guest stay, the longer average stays, the higher your transient average rate, the more valuable each of those phone calls is to your hotel. And if you have long stays and high rates, before I let you go, Mr. McKay, is email convenient? Because if, if it's OK, I would like to email you links to the options we just discussed. And then you jump on your email, cut and paste a link. You add a couple of notes, you're going to get more business. And then if you do place it on courtesy holds, if that's a revenue strategy that makes sense, it does not always make sense for operations. But if you do use courtesy holds, follow up if they don't call back. That's a way to eke out another one, two, three reservations. So I hope this has brought value. McKay, I'll turn it back over to you. I'm, I wasn't really monitoring the questions, but if we have questions, um, and then also anyone who wants to stay online for the brief demo uh, afterwards. Thank you, Doug. That's great information. A um, couple quick questions, and we'll hop right into the demo. Uh, first question is, is, I think, a really good one. Um, any specific advice for the luxury section of the sector of the industry? How is luxury different or, or similar to, are okay. there any different sort of rules for the luxury space? Okay, so the concepts are the same whether you're the economy hotel or the, you know, the ultra luxury. We want to ask better questions and we want to describe things in a way which paint that picture. Now, if you're a mid-market hotel, you do not have a lot of facilities right in your hotel, but chances are you've got things nearby. That's why they drop your hotel constructions into places that are centrally located to other things. Specific to luxury, there's a lot more to talk about. So once again, we have to ask more questions. This is, you know, instead of saying, oh, let me tell you about the hotel, that would not be a 30-second commercial. That would probably be a three-minute commercial to cover everything. So your risk is that you try to tell everyone about all the wonderful things Instead, luxury hotels, train your staff to ask those questions we covered. Find that hot button and then be sure they can paint a picture. You know, if, if, whether it's describing the golf course or the restaurants. Um, and even if you're on, off-site, you know, just give them the verbiage. The, uh, sample dialogue, not scripting. Awesome, Doug. Thank you. Go ahead. We can use sample dialogue. You don't want to give them a script that everybody reads for the same description you know, of everything, but give them words and, and phraseology that they can, they can mirror. Awesome. OK, good. Um, I do want to um, let's see if there's any other questions here. Um, OK. Um, why don't we do this, Doug? Um, there's one more question here I want to pose to you real quick. Um, OK. In terms of your training process, Explain how that works. Do you go in and do you listen to calls first? Do you go in and do a training, then listen to? I mean, how does your whole process work with the Kindi? Uh, um, it varies calls? with every client. Some clients want to now. Of course, if they have call monitoring, we would definitely listen to calls. You know, just for every single client, just to get a feel. Um, if they've not yet launched that, you know, many times they'll start out with mystery shopping, and it's up to the client if they want us to call in advance. Um, some clients prefer us just to start measuring afterwards. Generally, we we recommend having us call in advance. Then we have uh, either a one-time training for clients that are doing really well now, but they just want to have the new process. 
um, where we go and train and then we continue to either mystery shop them or if they've invested in call monitoring such as this, we will then have our team here dial in remotely, listen to real calls and score those. Um, and then of course we have our ongoing training plans where we return to the site every four months, so three times a year and, uh, and then that's an ongoing relationship. So it's really based on what the training needs of that client are. Great. Very good. Um, well, I think, why don't we do this? Why don't we jump into this demo? And so everybody, um, we've given you some research, some tools. We're now going to just jump into a demo of Log My Call. So if you're not interested in it or what have you, just hop off. Um, it'll only also, take about you, five minutes, though. Yeah, go ahead, Doug. Yeah, and since we're a little bit late, if anyone is on the call that wants a separate demo, I know you'd be willing to do that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we know if you've got to run or if you're just, you know, you don't have time right now or what have you, just hop off. Um, but what we'll do is we'll um, show my screen real quick here, and we'll give you just a little tour of Log My Calls, how it works, and uh, be very quick, five to ten minutes, and then we'll be done. Um, so I want to take you to logmycalls.com first. And, uh, okay, there we go. You can see it. All right, so Log My Calls, um, as I said at the outset, we work uh, to track uh, marketing efforts as well as phone performance. So we provide inexpensive call recording. If you already have a call recording device, we can work with that as well uh, by shooting calls into our system. And then we do provide marketers really, really good data about which channels produce phone calls. So login is right up here. And I should mention that the webinar recording will be housed right here in this webinar series button on our page. So you'll get an email about that as well. Um, this is the page you see right after logging in. This is going to tell, uh, a, it's going to have some decent information down here, what the recent activities were, if anybody's listened to a call recording or scored a call or anything like that. But the majority of the data is right up here. So in this track area, what this is going to do is this is going to tell from a marketing perspective which uh, channels, efforts, campaigns, keywords, etc. are producing phone calls. So you'd be able to tell, okay, uh, the number associated with my direct mail campaign produced this many calls in this period of time. Uh, the number associated with my website uh, produced this many calls. And you're even going to be, tell, be able to tell geographically where those calls came from. So we're located in Utah, so a lot of the calls for this demo account actually come from our servers in Utah. So uh, it's going to tell you even down to the county level and then even the zip code level where the calls are coming from. So from a marketing perspective, this is the way to track which efforts generate phone calls. This is where you would use uh, data for those mobile click-to-call ads I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar. Um, the area that is very useful in the hotel industry specifically is this place that allows you to actually listen to real calls. So the calls that come in through the system, either via the tracking phone numbers that we provide, or if you have a call recording system, we can link that up with our tool and you can listen to the calls right in here. You just simply click the little listen button. And you can see, of course, it's all filterable by date uh, and even by number. And then the total number of calls appears up here, things like that. Let's, uh, I just want to jump in there with regards to the information at the top. If you are a smaller hotel or a rental company that does not have a call, um, uh, an ACD function that tells you things like number of calls on hold, hold time, average hold times, you've got some good data up there. You can talk about, you can uh, look at the uh, your service efficiency numbers. Totally. Yeah, you, it's going to give you a very good sense of the number of calls, answered, unanswered calls, average call duration, that sort of thing. Um, and, and that's a great point. The, the other thing to notice here is that the ability to listen to calls is very simple. So you just simply click the little play button, button the call starts to play. You can also email the call recording without having to download it to your machine, which I think is awesome. And then you could download it to your machine if you wanted to. So if you've got uh, you know, some front desk person that you want to hear this, just email them the call recording and say, look, this is how you should do this is how you should answer the phone, or this is how you here's how you did it and how you shouldn't have done it. You can also add comments to the call, things like Doug talked about, you know, great greeting or uh, great job asking for the business. And they can you can save that and then they can even comment on those comments and sort of have an ongoing sort of Facebook style thread there. Um, and then of course there's tagging. I think this is really incredible stuff, this tagging. So what it allows you to do is actually sort of categorize calls. 
So if you have somebody that's a junk call, maybe they're just calling to get directions to somewhere else, or they think you're another business or something, you tag that as junk call, and then you add that to the call tag itself, and then that call is forever tagged as a junk call. You can then later search up here in the search bar for all junk calls within a certain date range, and you'll see all of the junk calls. So this is a very useful way, a very important way to, uh, to use call recording. So, and as I said, if you don't have a call recording system, this tool can act as that for you. If you do have one, then we can get those call recordings into Log My Calls. A couple more items and then we'll be done, everybody, because I know your days, your time is valuable. Um, we actually, this tool actually allows you to create a scorecard. And I know that um, Doug audits calls for his clients using this tool. So this is a tool that allows you to actually create a customized scorecard with criteria that Doug trains on. And did you greet the person using a good tone of voice? Did you validate their request? Did they get and use their name? Did they book? Yeah, and this is, um, a, this is a generic ahead, example. Doug. It's a generic Yeah, very example. generic. It's not ours. Uh, but yep. you can use our, our criteria, your own criteria, or any criteria uh, that you like. Yeah, it, which is awesome. So the scorecards really are is. so customizable, they create, they take like two minutes to create. It's not hard at all uh, to create a scorecard. So, um, yeah, it's very simple to do, and you can use, as Doug said, you can use your criteria, uh, criteria that uh, you've seen somewhere, or you can use Doug's criteria based on the things he trains on. So, and then based on this, you're actually going to have, and this is, as Doug said, a very sample one, a very basic one, um, just for the purposes of a demo. But what you're going to then get is a score for that call and a score for the person who answered the call. And then in this reporting section, you're going to be able to tell over time, is that person getting better? Is this specific property getting better or worse? But more importantly, perhaps, where are they getting better or worse? Where do they need improvement? So you can know exactly um, where training resources need to be focused. Uh, one more thing, and then I'll, I'll conclude, Doug, and then I'll let you say anything you, you wish at the conclusion here. Uh, what this allows you to do, this goals area, is to, and keep in mind there's this entire reporting area, there's like 40 reports in here, but I'm not going to take the time to get into them today. Just as I said, just know you can really track any metric you want to from a marketing perspective or from a phone performance perspective. Do you want to see if your close rates are getting better? Do you want to see if your employees are getting better? All that stuff. This goals area, what this allows you to do is you could set up a goal, for example, where you say, okay, I want to be notified via text message when I have an employee that scores below 10% on a call. So if an employee scores below 10%, they basically didn't do anything on the call that is good. <laughs> and so you want to be notified via text message when that happens. Or if you, if you have a client or an employee score above 90% for a given week, you want to be notified about that. So you can you know, do something nice for that, uh, that, cus that, uh, that employee. Uh, the other side of this is on the marketing side. If your marketing goal is to produce a certain number of phone calls, maybe you want to drive 100 phone calls in a week or 100 phone calls in a day or 100 phone calls in an hour, whatever the scale of your operation is, you can actually have our system automatically send you an email or a text message that tells you if that's happened or not. So you can really get data without having to log into the system every day if you don't want to. You can also receive information about how often your team is listening to calls. So maybe a big part of this is you want your team members, the people who are answering the phone, to listen to calls. You can actually receive information about how often they're doing that to make sure that's actually happening. So anyway, just to give you a quick sense of how this works, um, it is extraordinarily inexpensive call recording, and it is very good marketing data on top of that. So it's a good tool. Um, a lot of people in the industry are using it, and uh, it's, it's proving very effective. And McKay, just to jump in, you know, you and I, we cover this so many times that we don't, sometimes I just want to make sure we make it clear that they can either take their existing 800 number and move it, port it over, or with Log My Calls, let's say they wanted to pull a number from you and assign it to a postcard or an email blast. And then on top of that, what I think is really unique is you can also give them local numbers because today's callers a lot of times will search for that local number because they really feel better, you know, they might think they're going to get an actual on-site person that way. So you right. can assign that's local or toll numbers that are unique or, or ported over. That's exactly right. And the, the other two <laughs> points I would make as well, and thanks for, thanks for bringing that up, Doug, is first, 
the uh, the co the concept of recording calls is is you know it's been around for a long time. It's not a new technology, but the new technology is allowing call recording without having to install something at your at your uh, or a new phone system. We're, what we're saying is all you need to do is just either let us use your phone number and put it in the system, put it in our system, or let us provide you with a number to use, and we can record your calls. You don't need to install anything or, or have some big hassle with a new phone system. So that's the first point. The second point is that in addition to just getting call recordings, you're getting extremely valuable marketing data. So the majority of our clients in other industries actually just use our tool as a marketing data tool. So it's... Uh, you know, it's pretty useful from both of those perspectives. Uh, it'll tell you which, you know, you probably wondered, okay, this person called, did they Google search me first? Well, our tool can tell you that. You know, did they, what keyword did they search before they called? That's incredibly valuable information that you can, you can get with this tool. So, uh, with that, I think we'll conclude. Doug, any, any final thoughts okay. or final words before we conclude? No, I'm glad you drove home the point, though, that there's no equipment required. A lot. I get that a lot when I'm trying to explain it, that people... Um, you know, it's hard to imagine how simple it is. You're basically just routing your calls through your system before they hit your telephone system, and along the way, capturing marketing data. And um, and when you know, I, I guess if anyone's interested in the price, they they should contact you. But they already have a cost for inbound 800 numbers now, and you know, so it's an incremental difference. And it's I think people would be impressed, especially with a lot of the other systems that I've looked at that. Are extremely expensive. Uh, I just can't believe what they're charging now. Some of them link in with CRM and have some other functionality, but um, if you just want to do, you know, the the points here, it's it's definitely affordable. So yeah, check it out. I agree. Thank you for staying on, everyone. I see we had a majority of people stayed on for the demo, so we hope to have brought value um, in our time. And thank you again. Yes. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for Doug, for you taking time as well. We appreciate it. And thank you, everybody. You'll get an email tomorrow morning that will have the recording to this webinar. If you want to show it to uh, you know, other people at your company or other people in the industry, feel free to do so. And uh, with that, we'll conclude. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really, really appreciate your time and, and uh, hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. And heck, it's Friday. Have a great weekend, That's everybody. right. <laughs> it's okay, late here on the Eastern time. Thanks. That's right. It's getting late. <laughs> get home. All right, everyone. Have a See good weekend, McCain.